Oh, hey, um, didn't see you there. It's a mess in here. Hold on. Hello there. So you just hit level 90 and you want to get involved in the level 90 action. You want to know what to do and how to do it. Good news is we've got you. Nap Yet Gaming and we at Weird Gaming Adventure are going to give you some more tips and tricks. The first part of this collaboration was done at Nap Yet Gaming's YouTube channel. So run on over to Nap Yet's YouTube channel after this to check it out. Before we get started, this edition is brought to you by Neff Headwear. They said, Joshua, you're balding. Um, we need to give you some gear to promote because, uh, let's face it, your hair is going away. It's cold. You want to get some headwear to cover up the cold. So do so at neffheadwear.com. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's stop speaking French and get started. So you just hit level 90. You probably don't have that much credits, but you want to get in on the action. So you're going to want to make sure that you have maximum survivability. You want to have the best type of gear for minimal cost. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on for the first tip. May I suggest to you, no, may Star Wars Galaxy's Legends suggest to you, Mustafar. Mustafar is very important because their quest lines provide incredible buffs for you at no cost whatsoever. They're going to help you with end game content. I'd make it an absolute priority to finish the Fate of the Galaxy quest line in Mustafar. To complete this quest line, you're going to have to complete multiple quests. By the time you're done with those quest lines, you're going to have rewards such as the Serpent Shard. A strange Sith holocron, wild force shard offensive, wild force shard defensive. But it doesn't end there. Once you're done with the Fate of the Galaxy questline, you will get to choose between ba -da -ba -ba -ba, shard of retaliation and the Lair Crystal. All of these incredible pieces will help you increase your DPS or help your survivability, and it's at no cost except your time, questing. Uh, but wait, there's more. Make sure that you do the Stormlord questline. This is not involved with the Fate of the Galaxy quest, so you'll have to do this on its own. And when you're done, you will get the Musty Injector. This is absolutely important to have because it's a permanent buff. You don't have to equip it, you don't have to unequip it, it is just in your arsenal. That was tip one. As promised, let's turn it over to our guy, Napiet. Take it away for us, buddy. Hello, internet friends. Napiet here. Since I know Josh will be talking about using multiple characters, it seemed to me a good idea to offer a tip for what to do with one of them. Foraging. Now, this can be a very laborious and time-consuming process at the keyboard. It's worth it, though. Foraging is the only way to get high-quality liaise enzymes that Beastmasters need to create their pets. You can also find treasure chests that are another source of loot and income. Usually foraging works like this. You click the forage ability in your hotbar, an animation plays and your character slowly sifts through the shrubberies and grass at his feet. Whether or not you find anything, you then have to move to another location to try again. It's not the most thrilling exercise, so it's best done with an alt character while you're busy elsewhere. To do this, we have to use a macro and a strong creature pet or droid that can defend you, since aggravated worms will spawn while you're AFK and kill you without the droid or pet. Once you're ready, take out your pet and tell it to group with you, then issue the guard command. Now it will deal with those pesky worms that are going to come at you. Next, create a foraging macro. I've sent the text to Josh for him to post in the video description. Start the macro running and your character will start dancing and foraging across the planet. Basically, the dance animation keeps the character moving to a new location so you can keep going potentially forever or until you get to the edge of the map at least. You also look very silly, but it works. It's best to pick a planet where there's lots of wide open space with few obstructions. If you run into a player house, you're going to get stuck there. And as I mentioned, you do need a decent pet. The aggravated worms that spawn will be at your current level. So if your pet sucks, like mine does, 
it's going to die, and then you're going to die. The Lyase Enzymes are a good money maker, even if you're not a Beastmaster, and like I say, the treasure maps are really good. Thanks to Josh for inviting me to offer my two cents, and I hope this helped you. Thank you, Nappia. That was a fantastic tip. They can be super fun to do the treasure maps. Foraging while AFK is an incredible way to open up new content. And as he said, make sure that you have a droid that's going to keep you alive. Because as Boba Fett would say, you're no good to us dead. Tip number two on my end, but I guess it'll be tip number three for this video, is the Valerian theme park. Those of us who played during the live, especially during the beginning of live, remember the Valerian theme park being um, noobish, if you will, but not here. This is level 85 plus up to 90. You're going to be facing um, elites. You're going to be facing tough challenges and you will be getting some incredible gear. You may have noticed a rickshaw, a weird looking wooden type of structure hanging out in front of Moss Eisley for some of the guys that like to pimp their rides, if you will, in front of the starport. You get this through doing the Valerian theme park. It's cool looking, if nothing else. Also, you get the large windowed Tatooine house. This will help you hide. This will help you store all of your fat loots that you will be getting at level 90. In that vein, also you have the Imp and Rebel theme parks. Once again, in live, these were noobish, not anymore. You get some incredible gear, you get some credits, you get Rebel or Imp GCW points, faction points. It is the way to go, and at the end of the day, you're going to be having a fun experience. If you like being in space, both of those theme parks are going to give you some space combat. Fun. Okay, there you have it. Some tips, some tricks, some awesome stuff from Napiet, and hopefully awesome stuff from us at Weird Gaming Adventure. Uh, this part of the video is brought to you by, um, well, us. Go to Napiet Gaming, like, subscribe, share his content, hit the bell, and also if you like this, do the same with our channel. Make sure that you're looking out for the Boba Fett versus Disney series that's going to be on IGN. It's going to be on our Weird Gaming Adventure website, our YouTube channel, and also AdventureGamers.com. It's something that we are very, very excited to be partnered up with some incredible, incredible people. So here we go. It's time to say goodbye to all of our scruffy looking nerf herders. We thank you and we love you in a weird way. Till the next video.